Hello and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Career Series and today we are doing a moon flyby to get some more um, science points and hopefully uh, get some more parts for our future space program. So let's just start with our um, with our previous design, uh, first space. And um, let's see, we got some new parts, we got uh, separatrons, so we can now, instead of having these connected all the while, we can, all the time I mean, we can put these on the separatrons, so we can get rid of them when they're out of fuel, making us more efficient. Let's see, what else did we get? Uh, we got some stabilization, so let's use that. We don't have any... Um, any vectoring engines yet so getting it stable is important so it doesn't flip over and the nose cones because they look nice we still uh, just have the mystery goo and uh, well we have the vectoring engines I'm sorry we have that so let's use that and um, let's have four of these uh, we don't have a fuel pipe, so we can't do asparagus staging, so let's do something else instead. We have, at the beginning, uh, all four engines on the outside burning, separate, and then we have the middle one. And the rest of the flight should be pretty nominal, I think. We can switch this out with a vectoring engine too, just, I think it's more efficient, isn't it? Uh, it's pretty much the same so it doesn't matter actually and let's change out our pilots today it's Bill's turn to go into space so let's call this moon or man fly by and let's launch so I really like the new career series. I probably said it more more than enough in the last couple of episodes, and I think the game still runs pretty smoothly. Uh, but um, then again, I haven't been playing for that long, so I haven't looked for any bugs in particular. But I really like the night light they have now included, which um, makes the platform lit up at night times. So that's great, and the whole complex looks really great at night with all the lights all over the place so that's good so let's just do a launch and get this into orbit and hopefully to the moon or moon and i just saw on that flag that the flag has been changed for some reason okay we should have had had my own flag the one i made but apparently it's not there, but that doesn't matter, we can go back and change that later. So we're going to about 5000 where I like to turn over and start heading sideways for our orbital uh, climb. And just reduce the throttle a little bit just because it's so dense atmosphere and we don't need to waste so much fuel on pushing through it. And you can see it's still accelerating, starting to accelerate with the less throttle. So now that we're going sideways, I will throttle up a little bit just to make it so that we still keep putting the same amount of thrust upwards, but we now use some sideways too. For our horizontal velocity to be more precise. And I just realized something that these are going to run out first so we need to f uh, put that over there because it looks like these are running out quite a lot quicker than the small ones and I guess that's uh, reasonable since they're there there's they are the same efficiency but it has a lot more thrust in the sideways or with big engines and more thrust. the ones that aren't vectoring that's where I'm going with this so rid of that, let's uh, start up the middle engines too, and get rid of those. Ah, I didn't really need to push that around, but anyway, we did it. Okay, we have a pretty 
steep um, climb now so we can start pushing this sideways and get our horizontal speed up and get into orbit so I wonder what the mystery goo will say when we are deeper into space and approaching the moon and when we are at the moon who knows we haven't tested the mystery goo at the moon yet that's kind of the point so I think we'll just lock it there at about 10 12 degrees and just watch that this keeps climbing without the time getting closer if the time starts getting closer and closer you should probably burn a little higher and push your apple apps in front of you you don't want it to get too close until you are supposed to be at your apple apps so it's moving away quite quickly and we can then just go 100 percent horizontal and just use all that velocity or all that uh, thrust on getting sideways with our horizontal speed we're down on the last fuel tank hopefully we have enough fuel for this run uh, that's Ike Ike and Gilly is far off into the distance Paul and Talon there's the moon so it looks like we're going to have a pretty good uh, well we have to go half an orbit until on uh, to reach it but let's get up to our app apps and uh, four minutes away and we passed 70 so we can now fully time warp and get up to our app apps do our circularization burn there we are we don't have any RCS so we rely on our torque to do it and we don't have any batteries either so we don't have a lot of power so it makes the whole thing a lot inter more interesting. So I really, I, I like a challenge. I like the challenge with this. That's sort of the thing I've been waiting for with the, with the career mode that it, you get a bit more challenge and everything. You get, I get a new experience how to start a game over, I guess you can call it. Because I really miss how, how the game was in the beginning with all the challenges and trying to figure things out that was really really fun and I still I, I really miss that having the uh, annoyance and uh, really working on something and uh, failing and failing so many times I still fail at something but it's more annoying I guess you can call it it's more stupid things that are kind of like Oh, you just was too lazy to do that or something because I usually know how to do most of the stuff now, but Last time uh, well in the beginning I didn't know how to do anything and I had to calculate and I did way way big to rockets to get to things But now we can build like a, ro a rocket like this and we should get to the moon with this It really shouldn't be a problem flying this thing to the moon or man and we don't want to activate our parachute yet, it really doesn't matter, but we don't need to. So yeah, with this big engine on this small pod, we're getting a lot of thrust and a lot of g-force. So luck luckily Bill is uh, well trained in g-force, uh, in the g-force simulator and um, know knows how to cope with it. Let's say 40 kilometers. That's that's a pretty good height to to try our first uh, encounter with the moon. I think that should be great. It's a good place to start. And uh, when once we get in orbit or get close to the moon, we are going to do a science test to see what we get kind of what kind of data we get. So let's observe the mystery goo now and see what we get. So the mystery goo feels right at home here and we get 30 science points. Let's do a crew report and looking at the surface of the moon trying to find a good landing space uh, the inside of the craters might be the best option. So let's keep the data. Let's do an IVA to get an IVA report around the moon. IVA report. Oh, that's a lot. That's great. And uh, let's just get back. It's not that much to do yet. Once we land on the moon, I guess there's a lot of stuff we can do. And uh, 
find, hopefully. Even plant flags and collect rocks. We have two things to do on the moon now. And let's get inside, if you might. There we go. And board. And we still have one canister, but I want to save that for when we are at AppWaps. Because I want to collect some science data out here too. Just to see if there's a difference. And two days. So Bill has to live a long while in his small pod. So he is a brave uh, carbonaut living in that small pod. So that's the unused one. Let's observe it. And he still feels right at home. And we didn't get a lot of science data. So no point doing that out here. So let's retrograde and bring ourselves home and collect all this data. Let's take our periaps down to somewhere around 10. And I think that should, 10 should be enough. Let's see, 25, 11, 11 is good. Let's go for it. Time warp, slowing down so we don't pass the planet. That's really annoying when you pass the planet and go just straight through it and pop out on the other side. So yeah, having to save this whole thing on landing now, since uh, we don't have a decoupler uh, and if I decouple the mystery goo, I don't think we would get any science data from it or we don't get any science data from it because we haven't transmitted it and we need to collect it. So yeah, nice re-entry effects, coming in hot, really, really hot, at almost 3 kilometers per second, and, uh, well, it's just going to be a normal landing, isn't it? Uh, we can't recover while in, in the air, so I guess we have to watch it all the way down, but deploying the chute and just warping, warp, warp, warp using time warp for all all we got and oh watch the parachute so it doesn't break on um, once it's deployed there we go and we have so much fuel that this landing should go pretty easy let's see uh, 50 meters above the ground let's slow down slowing down keeping velocity slowing down and it's all intact perfect let's recover and see how much science we got from this mission so we got 45 last time I think or something that was quite a lot for that small mission but today we got 95 oh wait we got 85 and we have 95 so Crew report from the moon, IVA report from the moon, mystery goo from the moon, high orbit above Kerbin, and recovered from a flyby. That's about it for this episode, and I'll see you guys next time.